In this video, you will learn how to create the Astro Chair in Blender. I will teach everything from modeling and adding hair particle systems, all the way through to creating realistic materials, lighting, and finally rendering. With the default cube selected, press Tab to go into Edit Mode. Then press S followed by Z to scale the cube in the Z direction. Type in 0.15 and press Enter to scale it down to the correct height. Then do the same in the X direction, but type in 0.35 and in the Y direction scale it down to 0.4 meters. In the upper left hand corner switch to face select mode. Select the top and front faces, press X to delete them, and select delete faces. With the bottom face selected, press S followed by Y to scale down the bottom along the Y axis. This will create a slight taper down to the seat of the chair. Now, in the upper left corner, switch to edge select mode. Select the two back corner edges and press Ctrl B to bevel them. Use the mouse scroll wheel to increase the amount of segments. Now select the bottom edge, Ctrl B to bevel about halfway up the side of the chair. In the modifiers menu, add in a subdivision surface modifier and increase the levels to three. Then add in a solidify modifier to give the body of the chair some thickness. Adjust the thickness to about 0.02 meters. Add in a few loop cuts to adjust the curvature of the seat. Once happy with the seat, hold down Alt and select the top edge. This will be used to create the wooden backrest. Press E followed by Z to extrude the back upwards. First extrude upwards to where the bottom of the wooden backrest should begin, and then extrude again to the top. In the upper right corner, switch to X-ray view. Then click on the green Y to view from the side. Select the entire part between the seat and the backrest. Press X to delete and select Delete Edges. To adjust the curvature of the backrest, add in another loop cut. Toggle out of X-ray view, then press Tab to go out of edit mode. With the object selected, press G followed by Z and then 0.55 to lift the seat up about half a meter. Now press R followed by Y and then 5 to rotate the seat about the Y axis by 5 degrees. If it tilts the wrong way, press the minus key and the seat will be rotated 5 degrees in the opposite direction. For the legs, hold down Shift and press A to add in a cylinder. Then press Tab to go into Edit Mode and S to scale it down to the thickness of a chair leg. Mine is 0.015 meters. Then press S followed by Z to scale the leg in the Z direction. Press G and Y to move the leg along the Y axis. Position the leg so that it spans from the seat to the ground plane. This can be done by pressing G and Z to move in the Z direction and S followed by Z to scale along the Z axis. Then press R followed by X to rotate the leg about 8 degrees. Add in a mirror modifier to create the other front leg. Switch the axis to Y. In the side view, select the leg and press G then X to move the legs closer to the front of the seat. If the leg protrudes above the seat, Alt select the top loop, then press G twice to shorten the leg along its axis. With the top loop of the leg still selected, press S to scale up the top to give the leg a taper. Press Tab to go out of edit mode. With the leg selected, hold down Shift and press D to duplicate them. Then press X to move them back along the X-axis. With the back leg selected, tab back into edit mode. Press A to select the entire leg, then R, Y, and 8 to rotate it 8 degrees about the Y-axis. Then R, X, and 4 and minus to make them more vertical than the front legs. G and Y to bring the back legs closer together than the front legs. Once happy with the placement, Alt select the top loop of the legs. In the side view, press E to extrude the legs upwards. If the extrude is locked to the Z axis, press C to allow for free extrusion. To round out the top of the leg, press Ctrl B to bevel. Tab out of edit mode and press Shift and A to add in a cube for the supports under the seat. Tab back into Edit Mode, and scale the cube way down using the S key. In the bottom view, use the S and X keys to scale the cube along the X-axis. Scale this part longer than needed, because it will be easy to shorten it in the future. Then scale the support in the Z direction using the S and Z keys. Then press R, Y, and 5 to rotate the support to match the slope of the seat. Press minus if it rotates in the wrong direction. Then G and Z to move it up to the bottom of the seat. Looking from the bottom, rotate the support to span from one leg to the other. You might have to move it along the x-axis to make it fit perfectly. Add in a mirror modifier to create the second support. 
Switch the axis to Y so that it is symmetrical. Now select the front face of the support and press G twice to shorten it along its own axis. Do the same for the rear end. Tab out of edit mode. The modeling is just about complete. Select each object, right click, and select Shade Auto Smooth. To stay organized, don't forget to rename each object. The seat and backrest are still one object, so they cannot be named separately. To fix this issue, with the seat selected, tab into edit mode. Select the entire backrest. Then press P to separate the back from the seat. Choose separate selection. Now the seat and the backrest are independent from each other. With the seat selected, apply all of the modifiers. With the seat still selected, under the particle menu, add in a new particle system. Switch from emitter to hair. Reduce the length of the hair to about 0.005 meters and increase the number to 10,000. This can be a bit intensive for older laptops. Under children, switch to interpolated. If your computer can handle it, increase the display amount to 100. Under roughness, adjust the random value to about 0 0.2. And under hair shape, change the diameter to roughly 0 0.25. Now under the Material menu, add in a new material with the seat selected. Play around with the base material until satisfied. In order to see the material on the seat, switch the viewport shading method in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Now it is time to create the wood material. Go into the Shading tab. Switch the small left-hand window to an image editor. This is not necessary, but allows for a reference image to be added to base our materials off of. With the backrest selected, add in a new material and rename it. Connected to the normal, add in a bump node. Attached to the height of the bump, add a noise texture node. And then connect a Musgrave texture to the noise texture vector. With the Musgrave texture selected, press Ctrl T to add in mapping and texture coordinate nodes. These can also be added in the same way I added the previous nodes. Switch the Texture Coordinate Connector from Generated to Object. Don't worry, we will adjust the settings of the nodes to make the wood a bit more realistic. But first, add in a Color Ramp node that connects the Noise Texture to the Base Color. Adjust the color on the left to be a reddish-orange, and the color on the right to be a dark brown. Hold down Control and click in the middle to add in a third color. Adjust this one to be a light brown. Now reduce the scale of the bump node to make the wood smoother. Increase the roughness, detail, and distortion of the noise texture for added detail. Reduce the scale of the musgrave texture to flatten out the wood grain. Lastly, increase the scale in Z on the mapping node to make the wood grain appear to run horizontally. Now play around with the colors and tweak the settings until satisfied. I then connected the color ramp node to the roughness to make the wood glossy, but later decided that I didn't like the glossy look, and I disconnected it. To add the wood texture to the supports, select them, then click on the drop-down menu next to New Material. Select the wood material. This can be done for the legs as well, but the wood grain will appear to be horizontal rather than running along the length of the legs. So, instead, create a new material and rename it something like Leg Material. Then copy and paste the other wood material into the new Leg Material. To change the direction of the wood grain, in the mapping node, scale down the Z direction back to 1, and then scale up the X and Y directions to about 15. 
Now the legs should look much better. Add the leg material to the front legs as well. The materials are all complete. It is now time to work on the camera and lighting. An easy way to align the camera is to first align the viewport where you want the camera to see. Then under view, select align view, then click align active camera to view. Since the camera seems to be a bit too close to the chair currently, from the top view, select the camera and press G to move it back a little ways. Now in the camera view, press G to adjust the positioning some more. In the camera menu, adjust the focal length somewhere between 50 and 75 millimeters. This focal length is ideal for furniture photography. We can now switch back to the layout tab. It is time to add in the backdrop. Hold shift and press A, add in a plane. Tab into edit mode and press S to scale it up. Make sure that it is scaled long enough in the Y direction so that it continues beyond the view of the camera. Select the back edge of the plane, press E, then Z to extrude it up in the Z direction. Control B to bevel and use the scroll wheel to increase the number of segments. Tab out of edit mode, right click and select shade smooth. Now it's time to create the lighting for the scene. First delete the default point light. Then in the world menu, reduce the strength value to zero. Hold shift and press A. Add in an area light. Press G and Z to bring it up, then S to make it larger. Under the light menu, increase the power to about 200 watts. This will increase the light's brightness. By ever so slightly tweaking the color of the light, it will look much more realistic. No light is perfectly white. In the front view, hold down Shift and press D to duplicate the light. Move it to the left of the chair. Then press R to rotate it to point towards the chair. With the second light selected, go into the top view, press Shift D to duplicate the light, and move it diagonally in front of the chair. Then use R to rotate it so that it also points towards the chair. This light does not need to be quite as bright. I reduced its power to 100 watts. Depending on how far away you place the lights, these power values might vary. Switch the viewport in the upper right-hand corner to view the lighting. Under the Render menu, switch the Render Engine from EV to Cycles. This can be difficult for the computer to handle. To help with this, press Ctrl-B and drag a window around the camera's view. Now, the computer will only render what is in the camera's frame of vision. Under Render, reduce the max samples to around 300. Once happy with the look, I switched out of the Render view to lighten the load for the computer. Then. Under the Render drop-down menu at the top left of the screen, select Render Image, and wait. Once the render is complete, under the Image drop-down menu, select Save to save your final render. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep designing.